hello there, woman beings, and welcome to another episode of the Woman Being Podcast. I am your host today, Kelly Ann, and as always, I am joined by my two lovely, delightful ladies, Kelly and Emma. Hello. Howdy. (laughs) (laughs) And today, we're going to be talking about the wonderful world of aging as women, but particularly as feminists. So I will give you a heads up. This conversation is going to be fun, but also a little heavy, not as far as a trigger warning, but just take care of yourself. But without further ado, we're just going to dive right in. This is Woman Being where we explore thoughts and opinions and have the freedom to change our minds without expectation or judgment. We will hold a safe space and support each other as we navigate together in the form of feminine. All right, ladies. So aging, what a complex topic. The more that I've been diving into this, the more it seems so nuanced and... Like, it's just an unfolding, ongoing journey. But before we really get into the meat of everything, we are all 29. We are in the last year of our 20s, moving into our 30s um, within the next year. So I just wanted to see, have you noticed yourself changing at all recently, either internally or externally? And what has that been for you as we are moving into the more quote unquote mature season of our life? Kelly hasn't changed at all. Yeah, it <laughs> no change. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, I think uh, there is there's an element of just like normal aging things like wrinkles and, you know, s- skin and whatever that happen. But honestly, I feel like I've gone through periods of aging and it hasn't been like lately specifically. Like, there was a time in which I was drinking a lot more alcohol in my life, and Mm. I feel like I gained a lot more wrinkles during that time period. Or there was a time where I was struggling with acne, and so I was using a lot of product on my face that was very harsh, and Mm. I feel like that. But Mm -hmm. then, like, I haven't really noticed specific aging lately. However, I do feel like, as I've been reflecting on this, pregnancy specifically feels like kind of a for women that choose to have children feels like a very specific aging milestone Mm. in my life in terms of like my body is changing, my hormones are like everything about me is changing, stretch marks, weight gain, and just like the general toll that pregnancy takes on your body, like Mm. sucking nutrients out of my bones. (laughs) (laughs) You make this sound like a parasite. I mean, I mean, technically, but anyways, so there are all of these things that it feels like um, happen during pregnancy that feel sort of like, okay, you know, and then, and then there's all this messaging around it where, where women are like, you know, love your body or take pictures of yourself before you get pregnant because you're mm. never going to be the same. And yeah. this mm. is the time. This everything changes. And so there's all this messaging about how like pregnancy like quote unquote ruins your body mm. or like – is sort of this big drastic change, which, I mean, I don't know what it's like to recover yet, but it definitely has changed a lot of things about how I look. It does feel like a little bit of entering a new era Mm. is what I'm going to call it. Yeah. (laughs) Um, But yeah, I don't know. It's kind of an interesting, very present reality that I face. Yeah. Yeah, that's so real. And I'm like... Honestly, like you've taken pregnancy like a champ. Like oh. on it, I just have to say it though, because it's like it's not an easy thing, and like it's so normal in society. Like, but also I'm like, can we just like demystify the fact that this whole thing is like so crazy and not normal? Yeah, like it's normalized, but I'm like, it's wild. Yeah, I'm also in like my ninth month, so it like we're at the end, and so it's like all of the. Thing. Well, I don't know. I haven't birthed a baby yet, so that's probably going to cause some changes as well. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, like, I don't know. I wasn't expecting, like, I don't know. I, I guess I was prepared for it to change my body, but I also wasn't prepared for it right. to change. Right. Like, yeah. you can be mentally ready, maybe, yeah. but, like, the emotions or whatever. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, how can you be fully yeah. prepared? 
Yeah. It's and, impossible. And who knows, like, also what the exhaustion of having children and caring for children and having, like, it, those are all things that will affect my aging as well. Yeah. So, or at least physically. So mm, For sure. Totally. Emma, what about you? Um, I feel like throughout my 20s, my body has definitely changed. Uh, but I feel like mostly it's been things that I like. Mm. So I don't know. Like, I feel like typically when you're talking about like, oh, how's your body changing as you're getting older? Like people talk about it like it's negative. Mm. <laughs> and for me, I look at old photos of myself and I feel like I look like way too skinny. And I feel like my face just doesn't feel as like matured or like as pretty as I think that it is now. Mm. And so to me, I feel like I've I've gained weight, which I think has been great, like to have gained weight as I've gotten older. And like, I feel more filled out. I feel more like a woman. Yeah. And I feel more like um, I have like come more into myself. So mm. for me, when I think about like, oh, how have I aged? There's not much that I really think about where I'm like noticing I I don't know I feel like I don't notice a lot of the stuff that much sure like I'm not sure or at least it's a positive noticing which is great yeah mm -hmm. I mean I think I maybe have some more forehead wrinkles than I had before but I always had like I just have a big forehead and I can be expressive so I feel like I've always had some forehead wrinkles mm -hmm. I don't know like there's stuff like that I'm like Maybe that's changed, but I really don't know. So that's kind of a bad answer. I don't think so at all. <laughs> like, I would say for me, like, my 20s has been, a, like, up and down hill of, like, embracing my woman's body and then feeling at war with my woman's body. Hmm. Like, there's been just definitely an ebb and flow. So, like, in my early 20s, I remember just my body kind of, like, filled out, like, it was almost like the final stage of puberty that people don't really tell you about. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, oh, I feel I'm a woman now. Mm -hmm. um, and then my mid-20s has been filled with, you know, some health challenges. And so I've gained weight and lost weight. And now I'm kind of in the point where I'm like kind of gaining some weight again. And like I'm I feel that like, again, that tug and pull of like loving my woman's body and what it's doing, but also like fighting that internal like no you should be skinny <laughs> you know because like mm. I'm not gonna pretend that's not there like society that's the messaging right and so having been skinny quite skinny and then now not being as skinny it's it's its own mind game um so yeah it's been really interesting but I would say where I'm at now is I do feel pretty like restful internally if that's maybe a good word to describe it of like oh I can actually like fall back and like rest in my body and like be really grateful for how far it's carried me and what it has done for me but yeah it's an interesting journey yeah I um I feel like weight is something that comes with aging a lot of the time like mm -hmm. you People tend, I think, to gain weight as you get older, your metabolism slows down and you kind of just like, and maybe you're also just like more tired, so you're not as active or whatever. Like mm -hmm. you're gaining, usually often people will gain weight as they get older. And I feel like one thing I was thinking about recently was would I feel as good about my body if I ever did gain a bunch of weight? Mm -hmm. And that's something that feels like I have been very, I have like a lot of privilege in that. I've never really struggled with weight outside mm -hmm. of feeling too skinny, you mm -hmm. know? So I feel like societally that puts me in a position where I'm seen as prettier because I've never been a large size. But thinking about like, how would I actually feel if I gained a bunch of weight? Mm -hmm. I don't know. And it feels kind of scary to think about that. Totally. And know that like, there probably would be a lot of insecurities that would pop up that I've just never had to deal with because mm -hmm. I've never had the experience. Yeah. Uh, I've had like the experience light. Like I remember in college, I started gaining a little weight and I was very like, what's happening? And I feel like it was the same thing you're talking about, Kellyanne, of like the becoming more womanly and like mm -hmm. you just are sort of filling your body out. And I look back, like I said, when I look back at those photos, I'm like, I was so skinny. Like, mm -hmm. so to even think like, oh, I was gaining a little weight. And I was around a lot of people that were talking about weight a lot at the time. And so I think that impacted it as well. Mm -hmm. But um, 
thinking through like, oh, I've never really had to think about my weight very much. Right. And that's one thing that I think would be a whole mind trip. Yeah. If, if a bunch of weight was gained. And I think that perspective is really interesting because I think it translates over to what we're talking about today, like age, right? So we're almost in our 30s and like we haven't yet experienced what is to come in our future. And I think it's really easy to be like, I'm body positive when you haven't like actually had to do much of the inner work. Mm -hmm. And that's not to say your inner work hasn't been important and meaningful and impactful for you, but like the process of gaining a lot of weight and like still viewing your body with the same love and care, I think is it's, well, I think that, I mean, I think we're all really privileged in that area. Like we're young, we're pretty, we're like societally acceptable in a lot of ways that I think is like worth acknowledging, like in terms of yeah, at the aging. end of the day, we're all still 29. So yeah, <laughs> like the, there's only so much aging that has really happened yeah. in our lives. And I think we'll look back and go, wow, like we were hot babes. You yeah. Know? And and we are. Um, but I think it's I think the reason these things crop up, though, is that the conversation of aging intrinsically includes the conversation of beauty standards, mm-hmm. weight standards, and like kind of expectations that are placed on you that you may or may not have to or have dealt with yet. Mm-hmm. But um, it definitely feels like like an impending fear for me looking into my future is like, yeah. oh, am I going to struggle with this thing mm-hmm. that I've never had to struggle with? Yeah. But I mean, I tell you what, gaining 50 pounds over the course of nine months, even though there's a human in there and you know that it's like right. supposed to happen – Still mindfuck. Yeah. Even <laughs> even when it's supposed to happen, it's right. it feels like um it feels very sensitive and tender. And I think I've realized that I thought I liked the way you articulated it, is that you can be body positive, but mm-hmm. that doesn't mean that you've like had to do the work. Yeah. 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 Do you feel maybe this is sort of tangential, but Kelly, do you feel like have people mentioned to you things that are like, oh, you Like, you still are so thin while you're pregnant or, like, you, like, look so good because you didn't gain a ton of weight. Like, I think you look so similar to how you looked (laughs) before. And I often forget that you're even pregnant. (laughs) I do, too. And then I turn sideways. Yeah, and then I'm like, whoa. (laughs) Um, And so do you feel like there's been those – like, you've gotten comments like that? And how do those make you feel? Because, like – There are other women that gain so much more weight during pregnancy. Totally. Well, first of all, the official recommendation is that you gain 25 to 35 pounds. Uh, So That's such a small amount of weight. Yeah. Yeah. um, Which I think is probably just not even accurate for the average American person with the average Mm -hmm. American diet. So that's what they recommend that you gain, um, which I've obviously gained like almost twice that. And so that's just been hard, like the number on the scale, even though I haven't looked at myself in the mirror and thought like, oh, I don't like how much or like how much that's changed my body composition, if Mm -hmm. that makes sense. And I have received comments and usually I would say for the most part, comments are going to be positive because for the most part, society is trained to not tell you that you've blown up like a cow. You know, like, (laughs) I think there are some people that are going to say stuff like that. Maybe one or two people have said like, oh, you look so good or whatever, which is great to hear, I think. Like, oh, but I think for me, what surprised me about pregnancy specifically was that I've always thought pregnant people look really cute and I still do, but I don't feel as cute. As I think that I was going to look. If right. that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> sure. So yeah. it's like you, it, it's sort of a look, <laughs> if that makes sense. But I don't feel the cuteness at mm. all. Um, and yeah. so that's been, so when people compliment me, compliment me, it's nice, but I don't necessarily feel that way. Right. Um, You're like in the trenches growing a human. Yeah. And just as many people have said like, wow, you look so great. Like. You don't look different or whatever. There have been people who have been like, you're huge. Oh. (laughs) So I don't know. Yeah. 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 It's interesting to me because I felt hesitant at times to like even comment on how you look 
because to me it's intrinsically insulting how so many other pregnant women look. Mm. <laughs> because to say like, oh, you're you're carrying your pregnancy so well, or right. oh, you've stayed so thin. Yeah. To me, that's automatically saying, well, any woman that gains more weight than you, or who winds up carrying her weight in different places in her body than you, is looking bad right. for her pregnancy. Totally. Yeah. And I I feel tender around that for some reason. Like, uh, uh, why are we even right? commenting I guess or like why is there some sort of like scale of like how good you carry a pregnancy versus how bad you carry right. it like it's that's implying there's a bad so way so strange yeah and so I I feel tender on that for some reason no I, yeah and I think that's great because I think there's like a level of um a, yeah like a, a scale that you should be on and so I think any anytime your body is changing it's going to be hard but like there's this idea that there is this sort of acceptable range for you to land in during pregnancy. And if you hit it, you're safe. And if you don't, Miss it. then you're not. But then, then yeah, ooh, it you feel, but it also feels volatile because like some parts of my pregnancy, I felt really fit and really great. Mm. And then other, other parts or other days, <laughs> I feel really swollen. And, mm. you know, and I've looked at pictures of myself and my face and how it's changed. I don't know why I did this, but the other day I went back and looked through my bump photos like, because I've taken a picture every week mm -hmm. and looking at my stomach at like eight weeks pregnant. And I was like, how did I think I had a bump? <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I have abs. Like, what am I doing? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I showed the to Ross and I was like, Ross, I looked like this. Did you know that? <laughs> did you know? <laughs> Isn't that crazy, though? Like, when we look different is when we realize what we actually looked like. Yeah. You know, like, I look back. I mean, this might be similar to pregnancy, but, like, I look back, like, to when I was younger, when I remember being so insecure. And I'm like, wow, I was stunning. Like, yeah. and for some reason, we have this, like, lens in the moment mm -hmm. that's, like, really hard to, like, yeah. shake. Yeah. And I think um, there's also a matter, like, because I remember looking back when I was 18 years old, I thought I had love handles. And I was, it was like, 5'10 with... 122 like, pounds. LOL. <laughs> yeah. You had skin. Congratulations. <laughs> you know, and I look back and I'm like, oh, like, I, I was so insecure then. And then wasn't any different than now in terms of, like, how sometimes I view myself. Mm. But um, my body has changed dr drastically totally. in between now and then. Yeah. And so I think it there is a little bit of, like, how, how do we view ourselves with kindness mm -hmm. and I don't know it's yeah. not an easy no it's complicated path. well and like this kind of leads me into our next question of like do you think there's a difference between health and beauty in society when it comes to women and like the reason I asked this question is because it feels like Beauty isn't necessarily associated with healthy, but healthy must mean you're pretty. When you look at someone who's like beautiful, that typically comes with their fit. They have nice skin. They have shiny hair. And sure. right. And so it's like, oh, you are healthy, mm. you know, versus like someone maybe that's not as quote unquote societally beautiful. You would assume they are not mm. healthy. And so I find this, there's this interesting, because we have the beauty industry and we have the health industry for women. I feel like there's a lot of crossover when it comes to, well, you want to be beautiful, but really you want to be healthy. And I see this really weird, insidious connection there. Oh, I would actually reverse that and say, you want to be healthy, but really you want to be beautiful. Yes, yes. Sure. Um, because I think that a lot of marketing nowadays is like, be healthy so you can be beautiful. Yes. Uh, and that's not the reverse at mm. all <laughs> in what I see. Um, I do think, though, that, like, when I think about what you're saying brings to mind is, like, sort of celebrities on the red carpet type of thing. Mm. And I don't know that I'm ever thinking about them health-wise. Mm. That is never crossing my mind unless they look particularly thin, in which case I'm probably thinking – oh my gosh, what are they doing to be this thin? That right. probably is not healthy. Right. Um, but I think that there is a lot of obsession. Like I think, for example, about the the big trend with the diabetes pill that like makes you lose weight that got really big over the last yes. year that everyone like accused like Mindy Kaling and other people of taking. Um, that pill was made for 
making people healthy, right? Mm-hmm. But it was used for beauty right. at the end of the day. And, like, it wound up being, like, bought up by all these people who don't really need the pill. But I think that nowadays there's so much critique around stuff like that, too. Because, like, even when people heard about that, there was a lot of criticism at the same time. Mm-hmm. So I think, like, there's a lot more leaning towards, like, be beautiful no matter what. Health probably should come with that. Right. But – or I think even about, like, Kim Kardashian wearing Marilyn Monroe's dress. Yes. And that was a huge thing. Yes. That she talked about how she, like, starved herself for it. Yeah. And there was a lot of criticism about yeah. that. And so um, I think more and more we're getting more criticism around – being unhealthy in order to be beautiful Mm -hmm. because we're in the more body positive. Well, we're kind of like revolting against the nineties era a little bit, which is like in some ways so good, but then it does come with like other versions of control and Mm -hmm. like totally standards that are placed on people that don't necessarily fit the average human's lifestyle. You're still not seeing, you know, a list celebrities walking around with like a pimple on their face or um, like, their hair is still going to look flawless. Like, that's there's stuff like that that, like, is still really beautiful. And they also – there's so much talk about, like, keeping them looking young, too. Mm-hmm. Like, that is very idolized when it comes to celebrities and, like, comparing them now versus – like, you see those online all the time where it's, like, this was them – 20 years ago and this is them now and like how they aged or these celebrities aged so gracefully and these other ones didn't or look at this glow up finally they're beautiful oh i see that a lot too yeah is that like with younger celebrities yeah with really young ones Mm -hmm. it's like oh they really had a glow up or even some people like oh look at how ugly they are now like Uh macaulay culkin is one Uh that comes to mind like he just got a star on oh, the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Congrats to him, I guess. Yeah. Um, but, you know, like he got a lot of shit online mm-hmm. and people being like, he looks horrible. He didn't grow up. Yeah. yeah he didn't and you're age just well. like, oh my God, this human's just trying to like exist. Give yeah. him a break. But the reason I bring this up is because I see really aging in general seems like a very intersectional topic. So there's the element of youth, but there's also this health element and weight and privilege versus pretty privilege. And fertility is another huge one that comes up a lot. And so I'm like, when you talk, when we talk about aging and aging, I found a term uh, while I was doing some research called positive aging, which is um, I'm seeing a lot of older activists online, like, showing up and being like, no, this is how you age in a positive way. Like, it should be really, like, a beautiful experience, um, which was really interesting and cool to hear. But, like, it's – you can't talk about aging without talking about all these other things, especially as women. Um, So, anyway, I wanted to bring that up before – We start looking at some clips. So I curated some clips from my favorite anti-feminist, Pearl. Now, if you don't know Pearl, she is a wild human. She is has a YouTube channel called Pearly Things. And um, just to give you an idea of who this person is, she sells merch that says women shouldn't vote. And she claims to 100% believe that. Does she vote? You know, that's a great question. I actually don't know. Hmm. But um, does she live in the U.S.? She does. Should women be speaking on a public platform? Yeah. How does she get to do that? (laughs) I mean, yeah. Good question. She has a special privilege that none of us really (laughs) does. This is the interesting thing about Pearl. I think is this the first time she's debuting on our platform? Maybe. Uh, We've never played a Pearl video on here. Never? Not once? Well, today's the day. But um, the reason I bring this up is because... Men obviously have a lot of opinions on women's beauty. Uh, But what are the women saying that are not as helpful? So our first clip from Miss Pearl is going to be on the peak age for dating apps. Now, I find this really fascinating. She is citing an article or she's citing a study that was back in 2018 that actually a lot of notable places wrote articles about. I found one from the New York Times in particular. But there's a lot of places that wrote about this. So I hope you enjoy. When and women peak on dating apps. I'm going to say 22. 
for women? So for women, okay, 22. What do you guys think? Are these 20s? Yeah, must be. Yeah, 24 the most. Okay, what do you guys think for men? Ooh. I think it's later in life because some what females age? are like 31. 31? Maybe like later 20s. I'm going to say late 20s. For men? For men, late peak. 20s. Tell us, Pearl. <laughs> Researchers determined that while men's sexual desirability peaks at 50, so women starts at 18 and <laughs> falls from there. <laughs> For online daters, women peak at 18 while men peak at 50. I want to start out with, that's not a funny fact. <laughs> Well, and this is, like, based on a study that was recently done. This is not by any means giving people, like, a a peek into the world of Pearl and what her brain actually thinks um, and her bias. I <laughs> just want to point that out. We're going to get there. But she – or I'm assuming we'll get there. Yes, um, But what she's pointing out – I mean, I don't know what her take is on this, but what I, what I'm taking from this is – this is sort of our societal standard in terms of how we view beauty, sexual attraction, and, like, desirability when mm -hmm. it comes to the dating scene mm -hmm. as it relates to age. Yes. That a woman's, I guess, high point is at 18 and declines from there. Mm -hmm. And that a man only grows. And we've seen that. I think we could look at examples. I mean, everyone's talking about Steve Carell's Silver Fox. Mm -hmm. No one was talking about him being hot 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Whereas we have people like, uh, I don't know, younger women that, you know, have their moment and then decline yeah right or get hypersexualized and then decline and i think we're i think we're shifting where we have celebrities that are older like i mean beyonce still yeah. hot hello af you know <laughs> taylor swift still hot af yeah but like that's still considerably younger than yeah. you know george clooney yeah right? i mean a great example recently that just happened for us this past week uh, was Dolly Parton performing at a halftime show on one of the Thanksgiving football games. Mm -hmm. And she's wearing a Dallas Cowboy cheerleader uniform along with like sparkly silver, like spandex see-through clothing. And she looks phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And she's 77. And she was up there on the stage singing and performing and like, it was so funny. I was watching this. And right afterwards, you cut to, like, the two guys who were, like, the football commentators. And they were like, uh, um, yeah, she – that was really great. She she looked great. Um, but – and, like, they didn't know what to say because they were like, how do I – I want to comment on how hot she is right now. But I also feel weird about it because she's, like, 77. And it was, like, this weird fumbling that mm. they – embarked on <laughs> like we were like everybody could tell that they were like oh we don't know what to do and there's part of me that finds that um disturbing because their default is probably to comment on a woman's body and there's part of me that finds that um disturbing in a different sense in that they feel insecure in commenting on an older woman's body or finding an older woman attractive mm -hmm. when like like why can, Why not? Mm -hmm. Like, it's because it's, like, not been the societal standard to think that this 77-year-old woman looks hot on stage. Right. And so there, I think there's both of those things playing at the same time. Um, because also they should have just talked about how great of a singer she still is and that she's still up there at 77 busting out Jolene and, you know, freaking nine to five. Yeah. And they, yeah. they didn't talk about that yeah. at all. Yeah. Like when Paul McCartney goes out on stage, no one's like, wow, what a hottie. No. He's still got it. Like yeah. no one's saying that. They're no. just saying like, oh my God, what a, what a legend. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. And that's like, Dolly should be in that same realm yeah. mm -hmm. and, as opposed to just talking about, yes, she's wearing a sexy outfit. Fit. she's a sexy woman like yeah. that's part of her thing yeah but like she's also a phenomenal just singer yeah. and artist she's radically so, talented she is so anyways um that's a great example to me of something that happened recently that's mm -hmm. in that realm of like the like tension of is it even okay to find an older woman attractive right. is it even okay to think that which makes me wonder like how much is like commenting on women's bodies just like a like like a uh leftover 
artifact of like the predatory nature of how we view young women right as property right mm-hmm. to be traded and sold of course as you know what i mean like it, we're just like examining them like mm-hmm. they're cattle and mm-hmm. being like this yeah. is good stock we shall marry her off <laughs> yes <laughs> that's how, how many feels. goats is she worth yeah, <laughs> yeah. but like when it's a 100%. 77 year old woman it feels uncomfortable because yeah. you're like oh no she's not She's not for sale. She's not for right. sale. Yeah. Well, and part of that, I think, is a lot of this comes down to a woman's quote unquote value is her ability to reproduce. Mm-hmm. And she's so far past her quote unquote reproducing years versus, you know, a girl who's 18, which, by the way, that's creepy. Like, she's yeah. barely legal, guys. Mm-hmm. But we're like, rawr. Like, yeah. let's wife her up. And I'm mm-hmm. like, ooh, that feels like, like you said, predatory to me. Yeah. And especially when it's like men's sexual desirability peaks in their 50s. Like, I'm like, that That to me is a little bit wild. But mm. I think we've been so conditioned for that, though. For sure. Like, I mean, I think that... The idea of, like, a man looking young can often be looked down on. Like, oh, he has, like, a baby face or he looks, like... You're right. Like, people have talked about that with, like, Timothy Chalamet or even Tom Holland. Like, they're Mm -hmm. both... They've both become more and more of, like, you know, um, sort of sex icons or, like, more seen as, like, handsome as they've gotten older. But they both were actors where it was, like, oh, they look so young or they look so little and like they're in their 20s and they still are well yeah and people still make fun of people who think timothy chalamet is hot like yeah Yeah. there's like a whole sect of the internet that's like haha you must like timothy chalamet right yeah like it's weird to like a young man yeah 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 exactly whereas like it's not questioned yeah when even a young woman thinks George Clooney is hot. Right. Like, that's not... Or even, like, Ryan Gosling. Ryan Gosling's freaking old. Yeah, is like, he, like, he's 45? Quite a lot. Yeah, he's in his 40s. Yeah. And so, like, thinking he's hot is, like, totally normal. When it comes to, like, Ryan Gosling, uh, we just had the Barbie movie come out this year. Mm-hmm. And he's starring next to a woman who is 10 years younger than him mm-hmm. and being framed as, like, essentially the same age, same level of desirability. Mm-hmm. And Margot Robbie is 33 and he's 43. That's wild to me that, like, there's such – there's this big age gap. And Mm -hmm. 33 is already considered quite old for a woman. Right. And she – like, there's also so many people that hate on people who like Margot Robbie, which is wild because she is so stunning. She's beautiful. Yeah. But I think that that's just telling. Like, you see that a lot where, like, men who are significantly older will get paired with women who are so much younger. I was thinking about this recently, too, with um, Hugh Grant. (laughs) In, um, I've seen this twice, and I don't know what their specific age differences were, but in the movies Music and Lyrics and Love Actually, his character falls in love with a woman who, to me, seems much younger than him. Mm -hmm. And he's seen as, like, it's never questioned that, like, they would be attracted to him when, like, he's quite a bit older. Like, Mm -hmm. Hugh Grant, like, is, I think, probably in his 70s by now, Mm -hmm. um, and at the time of those filmings, he was, like, in his 50s or 60s, and he's with, like, women in their 20s or 30s. And so I think that that's just – we've been really desensitized yeah. to that happening. For sure. And it goes back further than that. I mean, I think of, like, the Bond movies, right? That's a prime example. James Bond is this older, like, silver fox for the most part, and he is with – young women Mm -hmm. like 19 20 22 Mm -hmm. like quite young so this has been going on oh yeah since forever basically i mean if you want to go even further back think biblical (laughs) like older men are always paired with younger women like men were not conditioned to quote unquote settle down until they were much older because men also have the childbearing ability like Always. Well, and I was going to say that's the reproductive element of Mm -hmm. this conversation, I think, comes into play so strongly at this point because we're looking at this idea that women just die off after they're 25 when it comes to their fertility. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And men don't. And and, their relevance, even. You know, Mm -hmm. like, there you go. Like, you can bother a child when you're 60 and it's not weird. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But if if you're pregnant and 39, you're like... Everyone's, like, concerned about you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which actually this transitions so perfectly into our next video featuring Pearl commenting on Sofia Vergara, who at the time was getting divorced. 
and we'll just, you know, we'll let Pearl speak for herself. All right. We have Sofia Vergara, who we, we covered last week. She's getting a divorce. So this woman is 51 and twice divorced. She's been ensnared in a legal battle with another ex-boyfriend that she never married because she wanted to destroy the frozen embryos they'd created via IVF. And he didn't. Her most recent divorce is allegedly because her ex wanted kids and she didn't. But hey, she's partying in Italy in a swimsuit. This is exemplary of what is wrong with Western society. There's no shame in being single, but very few people are being called to a life lifetime of singlehood. No one is called to a series of broken marriages. Single doesn't look so great when you're 70 and alone. It's really interesting because it's almost like we live in like a fake world because these women like they get their faces frozen and like they get all these like natural stuff where they don't look their age. Pearl is reading uh, a tweet, I would assume, from someone else commenting on Sofia Vergara. Um, and if you're just listening, what we see is a picture of Sofia, like super cute in a really awesome one piece, looking amazing because mm -hmm. she's Sofia Vergara and taking a sip of champagne. I think it's so interesting to me how triggering a 50 year old woman getting a divorce is. Yeah. To other people. Like, how dare she be single? Mm -hmm. um, and it's embarrassing. What didn't they say? I think the words were, "It's this is embarrassing that she's 70. I'm like, first of all, she's 50. Well, I think the they said down. that a woman has no shame being 70 and single. Right. So I think she was saying, like, in the future, Sofia Vergara will be 70 and single. Which is hilarious to me because also, like, at 70, like, people start, like, losing their partners. Like, mm. around that age. And it's, like, all kinds because of women dying. are single, yeah. like, in their 70s. And not necessarily because they have chosen to not be single, but also what's wrong with a woman deciding to be single. But I think that's the crux of it, right? Like, you don't want to end up old and alone, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. That is the ultimate storyline that we're all fed. So you have to make sure you have children by X point. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you'll be single and childless for the rest of your life, and your life won't be fulfilling, and you'll be sad. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is like the fear mongering that is used to keep women in sort of like a single version of life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like this is the patriarchal path that we have chosen that is an acceptable way to find happiness. Yeah. Yep. When <laughs> there are plenty of women who choose singleness, who choose no children, who choose children, who have marriages, who don't get married. Mm -hmm. And there's plenty of people who don't get married and have a life partner until they die, and we don't consider that valid. Right. But the the, the single narrative of you get married, you have children with one person, and then you live out the rest of your days in happiness, and that is the only way to live? Yeah. That's your option. Otherwise, you're going to be lonely and 70. Mm -hmm. And I think to take this further, too, like women that – um, they talked about her, you know, uh, wanting to destroy the embryos that she created, which that's from her own body. That is her DNA. And the idea that it's like that's worth noting because she's 51. And it's like she has these embryos she wants to destroy. Like it, it feels really like weird and like upsetting to them that's like she even has this option. You know, mm -hmm. it's kind of weird. Yeah. And I think that the whole single equaling alone idea is just so flawed yeah. because that also just idolizes marital relationships or just romantic relationships. Like the idea that you must be in a marriage in order to not be alone mm -hmm. when like that there's so many other relationships that you can have. Like, mm -hmm. you can have deep friendships and, like, you can have life partners and you can, like, have other people in your life. You can have nieces and nephews and brothers and sisters and cousins. Like, there's all these other relationships that are part of what makes a full life. Honestly, I think the idea of someone being so dependent on only having a spouse as their only source of relationship sounds really sad and alone. Yeah. Um, compared to someone who has a well-rounded life of relationships and maybe it doesn't mean that they have a romantic partner. Mm -hmm. And 
Like, I, it just, like, it's that idolization of marriage being that end goal of humanity. Right. Um, which we don't have to do that anymore. Like, there's yeah. there's no reason to, to, like, focus solely on that or force people into that. Yeah. Because women are able to make their own money. They're able to have status. They're able to be individuals and to be self-sustaining. Whereas before, marriage was very necessary because society was built to put women at a disadvantage in such a way that they couldn't, yeah. you know, they had to be dependent on a man or on a family member or somebody. And so that's really frustrating to me that she's like defaulting to single and alone. Mm -hmm. But then also like the default expectation too, though, is if you stay in a marriage and you have kids, you are default going to be fulfilled, happy and socialized in your mm -hmm. 70s, which... I think a lot of, like, we've seen a huge trend in boomer parents mm -hmm. kind of coming into the realization that that's not necessarily true. Yeah. Either because they've destroyed relationships with their children mm -hmm. and are unwilling to change in order to, like, adapt to the way that millennials have chosen to go after mental health and other things like that. Or because they expect grandchildren and their children are choosing not to have them. Mm -hmm. And so now, like, you can't make decisions based on how other people are going to, like, service your life. Yeah. Right? Like, you kind of yeah. have to – you have to live your own happiness mm -hmm. in, you know, in a way that, like, mutually enhances other people's lives. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you, you are going to end up lonely. Right. <laughs> so it's, like, it's not really about the marriage thing or the children thing because you still have to, like, conduct yourself – yeah. As like a mutual relational contributor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In whatever relationship Definitely. you're. Yeah. Maintain. There's plenty of people that are so unhappy and have so many children. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, or in really unhappy marriages. Like that's just. Yeah. The, there's no way that that can just be the default to happiness or fulfillment. Mm -hmm. But in another clip. Pearl continues. Also, would she be talking about it like this if this was a man? No. Like, no, it was probably, it was her fault. Yeah, I'd like to see pro it, it was her fault because she said it was because Sophia Vergara didn't want kids yeah. that they got divorced. Yeah, it's 100% the woman's fault. I mean, she should have wanted kids. Pearl straight up says this. <laughs> she actually thinks like the vast majority of problems are from women. Oh my gosh. Like she, I watched an interesting video from her where she said, HR would disappear tomorrow if women weren't in the workforce. And I was like, mm, whoa, Pearl. She's a crazy, she's a wild woman. All right. <laughs> so specifically, this continues on to talk about the way that women dress in their later, more mature years. But think about an average, like, 55-year-old woman that you know wearing a swimsuit like this. It's almost like we're living in this la-la land. Like, I'm sorry, 55-year-old woman should not be moving like a 25-year-old woman. This should not be controversial. I don't care if you're single or married, you're supposed to be an example to the younger women. Yet, like, I don't even wear swimsuits like that. And I'm half your age, lady. Like, and this is the crazy thing. It's like, we have all of these old ladies living like they're 25 when they are not. And we have a society that pushes them to live in this delusion. When literally this woman is at the end of her life, you know, I mean, she's going to maybe make it to like 70, 75, 80. And what is that? What does the end of life look like? And this is a continuation of what Sophia. This is a continuation of her talking about Sophia Vergara. And her in, swimsuit. Yeah. In a one piece, by the way. Which... Oh, my God. What are. What do you wear, Pearl, to the beach? Yeah, I don't does know. she like, wear a full suit just <laughs> to go swimming? I don't understand. Yeah. Is she wearing a wetsuit? <laughs> she must be. I but don't also, know. But also, like, what sort of example is she setting? She's wearing a swimsuit. Right. Yeah. While at the beach also, or at a pool. Plenty of 55 year old women that I know wear swimsuits yes. and go to the pool. Yeah. My Every woman in my family wears two-piece swimsuits and are 50 and up. Yeah. Like, they, I don't understand yeah, what the issue is. You're wearing a swimsuit. You're at 
the water. Yeah, <laughs> literally. Also, the fact, the audacity to say this woman is at the end of her the life. The end of her life? Like, she has like, some in her 50s? chronic condition. See, and this circles back to the reproductive value that women bring and yes. when their value in society ceases. As soon as you stop yeah. being able to produce children, mm-hmm. then you're at the end of you're your life. You're at the end of your life. Yeah. It's over. Menopause, it's like, done. Even, but like, she is contradicting herself because then she's saying well she's gonna live to be like what in her 70s or 80s so 20 to 30 more years of life like that's what 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 did you think the first 20 or 30 years were like was that no time to you was that nothing like i don't but also she's a celebrity and realistically She's going to live to be, like, 90, 100. Oh, totally. Yeah. She has access to the best she's of wealthy. everything. She's wealthy. She's very privileged. She has, yeah, she has access to the health care to keep her alive yeah. for mm-hmm. a long time. Yeah. And, no, she should be moving, like, however she wants to move. That was yeah. another thing that, like, That's got so me. That's so strange. Was like, a 25-year-old should move to their best of their ability just like a 55 year old i i think that that's like a crock that women have been discouraged from moving their bodies strengthening yeah. their bodies yeah. Down Slow, yeah in like, their old age people yeah. like women are expected to like stop yes but that's actually terrible for our health it's, it's so yeah. bad it's and encouraging being unhealthy so like a like, good example yeah. that a 55 year old woman should be setting in theory should yeah. be someone who is active in some way yeah like, yeah Totally. Totally. Like, that's how you're going to extend your life, and she's going to live longer (laughs) because of that. And another great example is wear real swimwear. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. We don't know what Pearl wears, but, you know, I don't know. know. I need to know now. A potato sack or something. I don't know. (laughs) Probably just a full-on wetsuit, I guess. I'm like, that that might be too form-fitting. That'd be so uncomfortable. (laughs) But, yeah, and also the whole thing about, like, Older women should be examples to younger women. I'm like, to me, Sofia Vergara is a great quote yeah. unquote example. Like she's out here, she's living her life. She doesn't give two shits about yeah. what Pearl says. She's gonna post her, you know, swimsuit pictures yeah. and make good decisions and leave relationships when they aren't good for her anymore. Yeah. I'm like, what? So for our next one, we're actually gonna talk about women losing value. Mm -hmm. All right. (laughs) Which we already know is a heaping pile of shit, right? Because the idea that a human being can lose their intrinsic value. But we'll see what our friend anti-feminist Pearl has to say. Hmm. Because for at 40 for a woman, it's basically over. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Having kids and like physically for most women. Yeah. Mm. I mean, there's exceptions. Sure. But that's not the rule. But as a 40 year old guy that like, you know, if you're doing pretty well, like you could mm-hmm. get married tomorrow with a 25 year old, have five kids, and still have a whole life. That's just not the case biologically for women. Yeah. Interesting. When she says have a whole life, that's fascinating. Like she is still tying a life to childbearing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it, it, that's just yeah. what she's doing over and over again. And so, like, she says, oh, a man can get married at 40. Have which also what was he doing all that time? Does she not care about that? Becoming a high value man, Emma. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. Because it's like, oh, if a woman is getting married at forty, then she's been wasting her time, probably. For probably all that time. She's been, you know, probably, you know, sledding around. She's been promiscuous. Yeah, she's oh. been wearing swimsuits, and she's been you not know, utilizing focusing her body on her career to bring children into yeah. the world. But a man gets married at forty, totally fine, and then is able to have a quote unquote full life because he can have five kids with his twenty five year old wife, mm-hmm. and that is wild to me because men still age like men still get more tired as they get older and you still have your body like decaying right you still are going to like get arthritis like you're still going to you know like she's acting like these men are in their 40s or in their 50s and it's the same as being a 25 year old and it's just not like yeah how many 50 year olds do you see like doing backflips into the lake or something like but a 25 year old dude totally could and so i think she's calling that like oh biologically they can still have a full life but their their only qualifier for a biologically full life is children Mm -hmm. and not like how healthy you are not like how like fit you are not 
any of the other things that factor in that both affect men and women. Like doing a fulfilling career or you yeah. know, having a fulfilling sort of way that you live your life. Like none of that is ever considered. And that's what I think like current modern day feminism. Are we in fourth wave, fifth wave? Who knows? The whole goal is like the antithesis of what she's saying. Because mm-hmm. she's saying the only way to be fulfilled in life mm-hmm. is to take advantage of your reproductive years, mm-hmm. birth children, find a 40-year-old husband, apparently. Apparently, she promotes finding an older man. Because For some reason. He's at the peak of his sexuality, evidently. Okay. But and, then, won't that woman be old and lonely and single? Because her husband's going to die, well, like, no, decades no. before she'll her. her. But children. she'll have her children and grandchildren to keep her... <laughs> To, yeah, so I don't know. I, like, so this is like the stand. Like, this is this is the only way to be fulfilled is for yeah. women to enter into marriages, to not keep effing up the workforce, yeah, right. and to not keep stirring the pot when it comes to patriarchal societal yeah. norms. Mm-hmm. They just need to get married, not wear swimsuits, but stay physically fit and beautiful, but also don't flaunt it uh-huh. with your swimsuit. Be feminine. <laughs> be feminine. But don't even show a person that you have tits. Yeah. Don't, <laughs> don't have like standards of course um and then your reproductive value is so highly coveted Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that that is the way that you score Mm -hmm. a silver fox Mm -hmm. and you live out the rest of your days in complete fulfillment whereas Mm -hmm. what we're saying is modern day feminism is offering women the possibility of living their life the way that they want to Mm -hmm. of making their own mistakes and finding loneliness and loss and grief through their own terms, mm-hmm. because those things are inevitable in life, regardless of whether you've done the patriarchal perfect start at 25 and have five kids script or not. Mm-hmm. And also being able to find their own fulfillment, whether that's in their career, whether that's in a family, whether that's in deep friendships or like travel or whatever. And no one is saying that you can't get married and live a filled life right like right. no yeah. no feminist is like no you can't be a stay-at-home mom you can't yeah. yeah do that you can't be modest like do it yeah live your life like please like if that is something that's appealing to you and something that would be fulfilling for you like by all means but also yeah. every woman in the universe is not like trying to live that script yeah. mm-hmm. and that is all feminism is trying to say yeah. right Yeah. And I think what's really interesting about what Pearl says in general is to me, she seems like just so much patriarchy just coming from a woman. Yeah. And what she consistently says is basically at the end of the day, you what you can offer as a woman is based on what you can do in service to others. And Mm -hmm. that's what makes people mad. These like anti-feminists are like, how could a woman be doing something for herself? Like, you are not serving the broader community or the quote-unquote family unit. And that is what is so offensive to them, it seems. It's so interesting because it does feel like a very Western mindset to me as well. Like, Mm -hmm. she's very much focusing on the nuclear family unit Mm -hmm. system Mm -hmm. of, like, society and totally ignoring the ways that other communities all over the world have developed family units and communities for millennia. Mm-hmm. Like, the 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 idea of, like, a, a community of people, like, raising children and of, um, you know, of godparents and aunts and uncles who feel ownership over children. And, mm-hmm. and that whole idea is, like, totally thrown out the window in this. Mm-hmm. It is solely on... Basically, the the mother right to sustain a family, to care for the family, and to benefit from the family. Even mm-hmm. like, I mean, the man it seems benefits as well, but like the it's it is a very it's just such a singular, single faceted mindset that's not even like old. Like it's relatively new right. of a way of thinking, and she's acting like this is just like. The way that things are. Yeah. And it's just not the way things are. Like, (laughs) if you're looking at broader history, that's just not true. Mm -hmm. So that's really weird to me. Also, is Pearl married? No. She has no kids? She has no kids. How old is she? 
I don't know. I think she's late. She's got to be mid 20s, mid at least. to late 20s. Interesting. I believe she was Why, a college athlete. She? I know. She got a college degree. She got of a getting college married? degree. I know. How could she? And this is the great, this is the fascinating thing about Pearl. She's the exception to all of her rules. So she doesn't want to get married? No, no, no. I think she she wants to get married, but it's, you know, it's tough out in these streets finding a good high value man. She's interested in apparently, again, in my research, she's interested in older men because men her age aren't looking for anything, quote unquote, serious. They mm. want casual. She's mm-hmm. like, I don't want casual. Yeah. Interesting. So Pearl, who's like spouting all of this stuff, is mm. not following her own advice, essentially. No. Or she's at least struggling to yes because she doesn't have kids she's in her mid-20s and she's already lost a lot of value because she's past 18 i know so i like that's just wild to me and like there's part of me that feels like i don't want to i mean i don't know her i can't psychoanalyze her but i'm like are you just projecting because you're like a little butthurt about something like you know (laughs) is she just a troll I think because that's she how kind of that's how she be. feels. Like yeah. she just feels like a troll. Yeah. yeah, to me, she's just like this is what men want. Yeah, yeah. and it's like okay, yeah, live it out. I don't yeah, know. like and this is the interesting thing. She is so extreme within the like women hate, mm-hmm. like hating on women and shitting on women that even Malika Peterson, which if you don't know who that is, that's Jordan Peterson's daughter, called her out on Twitter. And was like, you're just shaming and hating on women. It's not helping anyone. Like, Mm. we have some common ground on some beliefs, but, like, you're just, like, making people feel shitty. That's not helping anyone. Yeah. There's a – yeah, there's definitely a big part of me that's, like, how much of this is just performative and just theater for her? Uh, Because I was actually – I was watching an interview with a – congressman recently this sounds tangential but i promise it comes back Uh, (laughs) and he um is a congressman from north carolina he's in the house of representatives currently and he talks a lot about the theater of people in congress Mm. and how he literally like he won't name names but he hints towards people in congress and he's like these people go on the news and they yell and they act very inflammatory. And then when the cameras are off and we're behind closed doors, they're reasonable, normal people. And he like exposes them fully. <laughs> like he's like, these people are just doing this. So they get the views and the attention and the money uh, that comes with being an inflammatory figure. Yeah. And so there's part of me that's like, how much of her rhetoric is that because mm-hmm. she has yeah. obviously built a successful platform mm-hmm. off of this. Yep. She is making money mm-hmm. off of this rhetoric. Mm-hmm. And so it makes it hard for me to even really like believe her. Totally. <laughs> sure. Especially when she isn't even modeling it and being a great example. Right. Like she says right. that sure. women need to be like it's, and I don't, I don't think she has to get married. Like, I don't think that she... uh, I'm like, live your life, girl. Like, do whatever you want. But she's saying that she does. Yeah. And she's hating on women like Sofia Vergara who have two divorces and they're in their 50s. And she's... She has never even been married. Yeah. So uh, it's hard for me to even, like, take her seriously. Totally. All good thoughts. So we're just going to close out with a final clip on women being sexy in your 30s and how Pearl thinks that's embarrassing. Why as women do we have the sensitivity to aging? It's okay. It doesn't have to be the end of the world. And I really just had this series of tweets where I talked about this. By your 30s, like, you're not supposed to be sexy anymore. Yes, I said it. I said it. Shoot the messenger, I don't care. I don't care, shoot the messenger. Because by your 30s, you're supposed to have developed, wait for it guys, character. Yes, yes, yes. And you know, looks and looking sexy and all that. Guys, it just looks kind of sad in your 30s. It's sad, like this is delusion. Like it's just, it's embarrassing. Imagine being a wife and a mother and all these women will tweet, tweet me their selfies like please stop put it away i don't want to see it and and they're they're these only fans these old only fans models are tweeting at me their nudes and this is just exhausting and tiring <laughs> what 
<laughs> I guess, I guess you, you're not sexy in your 30s. I guess not. What? Okay. She said something that blew my mind. She said, you're not sexy in your 30s because now you have character? Yeah. So a lack of character is equals sexy? Yes. So what? <laughs> but okay, but also let's let's remember she also said that you should get married when you're 25, yeah. right? So that means you're only supposed to be sexually de- desirable to your husband for 5 years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, I I would guess, I would wager a guess that she would encourage even marriage as young as 18. Like, I don't see why she would be against that because 18 is your prime, right? Mm-hmm. So Also, I did just look it up. Pearl is 26. Oh, so she is four years away from not being sexy anymore. <laughs> and how is she going to catch a 50-year-old man if she's 30? <laughs> well, she would consider her – she has talked about this. She would consider herself, quote-unquote, average. She wouldn't consider herself exceedingly attractive. But this idea that, like, you have to develop character and then you become spontaneously unsexy. And if you're trying to be sexy in your 30s – it's sad or embarrassing. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm like, Paul, are you okay? That is Blink wild twice. to me. <laughs> Blink twice if yeah. you're not okay. Okay, this is actually something that I've, I assumed like wouldn't come up in our conversation, but I wanted to bring up, but I wanted us to talk about all the body image things first because that's what people automatically think of when you think about aging. There is another element to aging that has nothing to do with how we look or what how many wrinkles we have or whether or not we've given birth or any of those things whether or not we've hit menopause or whether or not our reproductive organs are still functional Mm -hmm. we age like in such a beautiful way like aging has been such a amazing thing in my 20s when it comes to my character and who I am as a person Mm -hmm. my confidence my ability to achieve things that I want to my ability to build a life Mm -hmm. based on how I want like there are pieces of growth that have happened in who I am and how I feel about myself and how I feel about others and how I've like surpassed Mm -hmm. like immature ways of thinking and growing that are incredible and I only expect and hope that that will continue to Mm -hmm. expand as I become more hopefully accepting and loving and grow as a human and so Developing character being weaponized as, like, a reason for you not to be beautiful anymore (laughs) or sexy anymore. What sort of men are we talking about here? Right. Yeah. Right? Like, what is sexy to a man? Immaturity? Yeah. Naivety? You're not able to make your own decisions. Yeah. Like, like, not fully formed prefrontal cortex yeah like right. it, it's borderline that's what we're, that's what we're mm-hmm. saying is yeah. like we're saying that men want a malleable insecure mm-hmm. like growing they want woman a child child essentially yeah who like doesn't know who she is and hasn't developed into herself and hasn't developed the confidence that but like all of the things that make a 30 year old woman attractive like her brain, her success, mm-hmm. her confidence, her ability to, like, see herself in a whole new light and not, like, depend on the specific appreciation of men in order to feel valuable. Like, mm-hmm. those are attractive qualities that are very sexy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think. And I think a lot of men think. Mm-hmm. But she's, like, specifically, like, no, like, this small range of infantile men who are 40 years old and still can't handle a confident woman. Yeah. Yeah. That is the ideal that you should be striving for. Yeah, no, it's it's weird. Like, super weird. Like, I'm sorry, how did we get here? Like, how did we, how have we gotten to this point in society where we have this opinion of how women should, like, live their lives and make their decisions? Yeah. Um, I mean, again, I will say it again. It feels like Pearl is just speaking out what, patriarchy says like but it's it's weird hearing it come from a woman and i will also preface pearl is one of many women on the internet that are considered anti-feminist influencers that are saying the same things pearl might just be one of the loudest Mm -hmm. or the most prominent um but well and there's there's men out there too that are like spouting this kind of 
Like you lose value after your reproductive years have ended, basically. Yeah. Yeah. But like, first of all, we haven't really pointed this out very strongly, but men do lose a lot of reproductive value as they age. Oh, for sure. (laughs) And we just ignore that because women are the ones going through the miscarriages that are caused by their faulty sperm. (laughs) And therefore, they're the ones that were too old to handle it, right? Yeah. But no, like, let's just point that out. Yes. Fertility is a co- 50% of infertility issues have to do with the sperm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So there is like, there's a two people that are involved in the success of said outcomes. So I'd like to point that out. Secondly, we are fear mongering women into thinking that after 30, they're not going to be able to have kids when really your your fertility doesn't really start to decline until you're in your late 30s. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So in terms of like statistically, like it does, you know, it sort of starts to drop off. I just listened to a Huberman Lab podcast about this. It starts to drop off as you're in your 30s and then there's a steep decline as you enter your 40s. Mm-hmm. But like you have your entire 30s, mm-hmm. yeah, 20s and 30s to like decide what you want. Yeah. Yeah, that's two like, decades. That's two decades. Yeah. And again, it just to me points back to the immaturity and like really poor thinking of like how we view women in society. If, yeah. if you really think, okay, your femininity and your reproductibility and your sexiness are the three things that make you valuable as a human, are you really that shallow? Yeah. Like, do you not value intelligence, humor? Yeah. Like, does a does a man not want to relate? Emotional with his stability, partner, as like, yeah. In terms of like intellectually, yeah. Does he not want to be able to have conversations with them? Yeah. To be able to like, like, it's about more than just sex. Like, do you not? And also, how your- good is the sex when you don't even relate to them? Exactly. In a real way, <laughs> like. <laughs> like, does your personal growth as a human not appeal to you? Like, yeah. do you not want someone in your life that is going to help you grow yeah. as a human? Like, someone to yeah spar to be with? a true partner, mm-hmm. like rather than a, a sex robot. And that's for you. not to say that like you know young people and old people can't get together and have equitable marriages. Totally, I'm not saying that, but like, yeah. But the idea that like you're not sexy because you're older and you have character is. No, you're sexy because you're older and you have character. Yes. That's yes. what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Like, it's absolutely wild. As we kind of start to, like, simmer down from the episode, how and why do you think aging and, inter- and feminism intersect? Well, I think that, like, so many of the things that we've already said really answer that question. It's a matter of, like, if feminism is the belief that all people deserve equal opportunity regardless of... Gender, age, sex, sex, sexuality, etc. Um, we believe in, you know, like the pursuit of happiness or the pursuit of one's own choices and like the dismantling of patriarchal systems that prevent people from being able to live as such. Then that incorporates the dismantling of um, patriarchal beliefs that devalue you over your lifespan. Mm -hmm. and like idolize youth and demonize aging yeah and i think it's about people learning to people and specifically women learning to step into themselves in every phase of their life Mm -hmm. and feeling confident and like secure in every phase of their life Mm -hmm. and not i mean we haven't even talked about like how aging affects your corporate career life or like how you're either too young or too old, no matter what, (laughs) you know, you can Mm -hmm. never be the right age for something. So we can look at a celebrity Mm -hmm. and we can go, I'm never going to look like that. And I have peace with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Like I have peace with who I am. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have peace with the fact that I've not invested millions of dollars into my appearance. Mm -hmm. Right. Like that to me is where feminism and aging intersect, like finding ways and continuing to forging paths for people to, Look the way they look, grow the way they grow, like step into themselves as confident people without mm-hmm. like all this weird, like, no, you have to have kids by this time or mm-hmm. get married by that time. Right. Like bullshit that doesn't apply to everyone. It's not yeah. an apply all totally. situation. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. I mean, I think that feminism in a nutshell is the radical idea that all people have intrinsic value and are... <laughs> worthy of dignity and respect and so to apply that to aging means 
your value doesn't go down. Yeah. You know, you're you're still worthy and a participant in society. You still have things to contribute regardless of your age. Mm-hmm. You still have so much to bring, even if you haven't had a child, mm-hmm. even if you haven't been married, even if you have wrinkles or you know, frown lines or smile stretch lines marks. or stretch yeah. marks or like all of these things. Like feminism says those things do not qualify or do not disqualify you. Mm-hmm. So it is it is 100% intertwined in yeah. my brain. I agree. I think I would answer my own question with a question and it is how could it not be intersected? Yeah. And I think as I really pondered this, it's like, wow, women can actually never get it right. If you're too young, you are naive, you aren't experienced enough. If you are a little bit older, then you're not young anymore, Mm -hmm. and then you're not as quote-unquote pretty or valuable to society. And if you're old, it's like, I mean, I feel like we've made it pretty clear, like, you should be you to baking rolls, otherwise exactly. why do we have you here? <laughs> exactly. It's like from a patriarchal yeah. lens, women can never get it right. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, what if we just like fucked the patriarchal lens mm-hmm. and just, you know, all of us just run out to the woods and get naked and dance under the full moon. <laughs> and then it'll be fine, probably. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so we kind of mentioned this earlier. How do you think self-care plays into this? Because, like, for example, we all have very pretty regimented skincare routines that we take very seriously. Um, You know, I think of self-care or uh, as a form of, like, working out or Mm -hmm. what you eat and how hydrated you are. These are all things that play into your quote-unquote beauty or Mm -hmm. anti-aging, shall I so dare to say. Because, yeah, it seems like a little bit of a gray space. Mm -hmm. I will say that I don't know that... I've often thought about my skincare in terms of aging specifically, but I tend to think of it in terms of, well, I want my skin to look nice. Mm. But I think that that is intrinsically linked with aging because it's the idea that like aged skin, we already think the aged skin doesn't look as nice. We Mm. want our skin to look baby soft and Mm. smooth and we want to have no blemishes and we want to be glowing. And even though I don't consciously think like, oh, I really need to anti-age specifically, but I'm thinking, oh, I want my skin to look good, which means youthful Mm. really at the end of the day. And I don't think that that's wrong. I think that um, there is a sense where there's some obligation towards it. Like we have the privilege to buy skincare products, to invest in our skincare and our exercise or what like hair care or whatever else you want to put into that category. Um, and it's going to be beneficial to me corporately, as you mentioned, Kelly, Mm -hmm. to take care of my skin. It's going to be beneficial to me in the dating world Mm -hmm. to take care of my skin. (laughs) It's going to like all these things. And I don't know that I'm thinking about them actively. I also just enjoy doing those things. Yeah. You know, like I also enjoy the practice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think that like you hit the nail on the head when it comes to, pretty privilege Mm -hmm. and regardless of whether or not like our intrinsic value is tied to our beauty I think there are definite benefits within society to invest in your beauty Mm -hmm. Um, and so because we have access to the funds Mm -hmm. to be able to invest like I'm a sunscreen gal you know like it's the number one anti-aging product that exists you know Aside from, like, just avoiding the sun. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> like, that – I don't know. I think there's a tough balance with with health and with weight, just like there's a tough balance with aging and with skincare mm-hmm. and, like, self-care and, like, vanity. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. And I don't know what the balance is or where the – the lines are drawn or whatever, and yeah. I don't – honestly, I don't think they exist. But I think it, for, like, inner, inner peace or – personal enjoyment or like if someone doesn't care about their wrinkles they shouldn't worry about their wrinkles yeah you know if they're not trying to have big biceps then they shouldn't be doing curls you know but like I think I'm just I'm trying I see how movement for example benefits my life and how I feel Mm -hmm. and so I continue to work out yeah and I see how sunscreen benefits my skin and how it looks and so I continue to 
use the products that I've been using. And Mm -hmm. so it's like things that help me feel confident and fulfilled and don't introduce insecurities that prevent me from enjoying life fully. If I have the funds to invest in them, I will. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think that we can't just like strip away all that we've been conditioned towards when it comes to this stuff. And I'm also not in the business of like shaming women for trying to have nice skin or something. You know, like I, I don't, I think that if it gets to a point of it being harmful, then that's a whole different story. I think too, that like, there's so much that has to do with, you know, skincare or fitness that also are indicators of your health. Like Mm -hmm. if you're breaking out, is there something that's throwing off like the balance of hormones in your body? Is there something that you're eating that's hurting you? (laughs) Like, Mm -hmm. is there a diet change that needs to happen? Like those are indicators that our body gives us that something's off balance. Vital signs. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, I think that there's the vanity aspect of like, oh, I don't want to break out. I don't have pimples or whatever. Um, But also there are indicators for you to, you know, work on taking care of your body. Mm -hmm. So I think that there's also that aspect of, I think that it's impossible to disentangle this stuff from vanity, Mm -hmm. but it also is not solely vanity. Yeah, I completely agree. Like, I think part of the joy of being on this planet is indulging in your body and enjoying what it means to actually have skin you know, to be in a body and like caring for myself is part of that enjoyment. And it really makes me think of my somatics teacher um, was teaching on uh, embodied social justice, which is a pretty heavy topic. Um, But she also opened it up in a way of like, listen, we're going to advocate and like talk about heavy things. But in a world with so much going on, if you have the ability to be well, how dare you not be well? I'm like, if you have the ability to care for yourself, how dare you not care for yourself? Mm. And I think that is part of, there's going to be a level of complexity. And I think what could be harmful for one person wouldn't be harmful for another. And so it's all about like you knowing you. Like Mm -hmm. if it's like, oh my gosh, I know that I need to get in 10,000 steps a day because that's what helps my body feel good. But then someone else is like, I might, you know, struggle to get 10,000 steps in or maybe they're feel like trying to come at it from I need to lose weight. So I have to take Mm -hmm. 10,000 steps. Those are two very different places. And so we're all motivated by different things Mm -hmm. is my opinion. Well, and I also want to add that like a lack of self-care and hygiene can be like a sign of poor mental health just as much as like over yeah over hyper over obsessiveness about it can be a sign of poor mental health so Mm -hmm. like if you have a friend that hasn't showered in a week or two weeks that's a problem and you're going to be concerned about them because that's a sign of lack of care in oneself Mm -hmm. and so you know i think that there's pieces of like what self-care and hygiene look like to each person that's different like if someone has just like they love to go running and they've just stopped and they're you know suddenly thrown eat healthy eating out the window and they're mm. eating McDonald's every day and they're yeah. just like depressed. You know mm, what I mean? Like gain 20 pounds all yeah. of a sudden. Like that. Yeah. I think sometimes people will maybe on the pearl end of things be like, it doesn't matter. You're not sexy. Mm. Don't try to be. Mm-hmm. But it's like, yeah. no, no, no. Like find that balance within yourself of like what is self-care and what is, I mean, we're not trying to give people eating disorders and say like, yeah. right. Walk 10,000 steps a day, work out 60 minutes a day, never eat sugar, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think sometimes eating sugar is a form of caring for yourself. Mm -hmm. For sure. Sometimes a donut is just for as good for you in different ways as your broccoli. Yeah. You know? Sure. Yeah. It's just a matter of, like, knowing yourself, knowing what you need, and, like, everyone's going to be different. Totally. Like, you are choosing – like, either way, like, you're choosing yourself, right? Some days you need to choose the ice cream and some days you need to choose the green juice. Yeah. And it literally – versus, like, me, you know, you were saying, like, eating sugar can be self-care. Absolutely. For me, eating too much sugar is bad Mm because I get a yeast infection, Mm -hmm. right? And so it's, like, again, like, the nuances of being your own person. Totally. Which is so contradictory to Pearl's messaging Mm -hmm. because hers is a one-size-fits-all message. Mm -hmm. And the assumption that every 
person is essentially a copy paste. Like she is totally, what's the word? Homogenizing all people Mm -hmm. into one framework of what it looks like to have a happy, successful life. Mm -hmm. And that's just simply not the case. People are not single faceted in that way. Right. It makes me think of a lot of things that we've mentioned today, like the health industry in general. Something that is very popular right now is the 75 day hard. Have you seen that? No. Mm-hmm. That yeah, sounds... you've seen it. It's, <laughs> what it's a hard. bad word. It's, it's hard. I think that, <laughs> no, but that wording just like made 75 me... hard or something. 75 so hard. Yeah. Okay, well, the wording just makes me think someone has a boner for yeah, 75 no. days straight. I mean, <laughs> many straight white men do for this process. I don't know. It's uh, like it's like you read your you read a book every day, you work out Outside and inside for at least 45 minutes every day, mm, combined, okay. or not combined, but individually. So a total of 90 minutes of workout a day. Yeah. You don't eat sugar. Eat clean. You only eat, yeah, like there's like a oh, specific a regimen drink of food. You drink so much water. Yeah, like okay. it's, I feel like I've heard of things like this. I don't know that I've heard specifically 75 day hard, but yeah. And if you miss any of those things on any day, you have to start over. Yeah. Okay. It's silly, yeah. but it's some, that same some people idea. love it. Some um, people I will love caveat it. it with some people enjoy it, but it also is pretty intense. Some people love it. I would argue maybe somatically it's not the most trauma informed option for you, but mm. I will digress because again, everyone is different. But it's that same idea of like, this is the formula. Yeah. I think there's actually like a weird thing in our society about every day. Mm-hmm. Like if you're like you're not committed unless you're doing it every day. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. you have to like this is a pregnancy example. You have to drink raspberry leaf tea every day from 32 weeks until you give birth so that you can speed up labor and you have to eat this number of grams of dates and you have to like you have to walk a certain number of steps every day and you have to like and I'm like whoa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There are things you have to do every day. You have to get up, you have to go to sleep, you have to eat, you have to drink water. Yeah, <laughs> and those are like the things yeah. that right. you need every day. Yeah, like mm-hmm. you can walk a few times a week. Mm-hmm. You can walk a couple times a week this week, and five five days the next week, and seven days the next week. Yeah. Like you don't need. Yeah, I, I just like I kind of reject any sort of like if you're not writing twenty thousand words every day for the next six months, then you don't care about you're your not dreams. A serious writer. Yeah, like yeah. I'm like whoa. Yeah. yeah, there's like pacing. Like mm-hmm. you can do things sporadically and they can still be very beneficial to your life Mm -hmm. i would argue that's also a very masculine framework it is because it it goes back to hormones right where men have the 24-hour hormone cycle and women have a roughly 30-day hormone cycle so the idea that you're going to be able to do all of the same things every single day in the same way to the same extent is so masculine. Mm -hmm. Like, because men are experiencing the same hormone levels every single day. Yeah. While, like, a woman in her luteal phase versus a woman on her period versus a woman who is on ovulating, like, you're going to have totally different experiences of, like, what your capacity looks like, what your energy levels look like, like, how your emotional state is, like, your focus and your concentration. Like, all of those things are changing. Like, the idea that you could just do these things every single day mm-hmm. is – it it's sexist <laughs> at the end of the day, I think. I agree. And with that in mind, all right, I'm curious, ladies, what do you hope – your aging process looks like as we ease into our 30s and then eventually into our 40s and 50s and is there anyone that you look up to within the that's maybe older and has arrived at that space already i want my aging process to look the same as it has really Mm. i mean i talk a lot about how i'm very excited to be 30 and i also Like, I think about people who talk about peaking in high school Mm. and who talk about how they miss those days. (laughs) And, And, yeah, that blows my mind because I actually genuinely think, like, each sort of era of my life has only been better Mm -hmm. you know like maybe like there's been a year that's like not as good as another year things like that but like I would say as I've gotten older things have only gotten better so why would I 
um, go back. And why would I think that wouldn't stop? Like, mm. I'll just keep getting older and things will keep getting better. <laughs> like, you get more wisdom, more experience. You get, I feel more beautiful. I feel more within my own body, more comfortable with myself. I feel more connected with the people around me. I have deeper relationships and friendships and I'm closer to my parents than ever. And like, all of these things, um, I think about, I went home for Christmas last Christmas and uh, my mom told me that I seemed like the most confident and the most in myself that I had ever been. Mm -hmm. And it's like, that's part of aging, yeah. I think. Mm -hmm. And so beautiful. I just want it to get better. I'm getting emotional about this because I'm also thinking about the people that are examples to me of that. Yeah. And um, I mean, one person I would say is my mom. Yeah. <laughs> Because I think that she has also gotten so much better with age. And she would say the same. Like, she has watched herself mature with age. She has watched herself become even more comfortable within herself. And um, she's finally, uh, these are her own words, finally with, like, the love of her life in her 50s. And she has gone through two divorces, Pearl, and then found the love of her life in her 50s. And she has, you know, she's like just flourished. And I think she's just so, so beautiful mm -hmm. inside and out. And that's what I want yeah. more than anything yeah. in terms of aging. Yeah, yeah that's great. Love all of that. Um, I would say presently, I think there's this pregnancy that I'm – Yeah currently just like taking up most of the space in my life so which we're almost there <laughs> we're very very we're much days almost away. there currently. <laughs> um, you could sneeze and she comes out yeah. <laughs> but like I'm super interested to see kind of my process postpartum I think this episode is a great reminder for me to like just embrace the moments mm -hmm. I had a friend who I was complaining. I told I told her, I said, I have approximately one million stretch marks. And she was like, I like to think of them as like little drawings that my baby made all mm. over my body. Just so sweet. And I think like there are there's like a piece of learning to love and embrace every stage that um, is going to be challenging and beautiful. But yeah, like I think. The postpartum process comes with the same level of expectations, I think, that the prenatal process comes with. Like, there's a range of, like, wow, you bounced back. Maybe. And lots of things you should do every day, I'm yeah, sure, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, sure. oh, you got to get your pelvic floor exercise and you got to do your yeah. ab whatever. And you oh, got to get your waist oh, yeah. trainer and blah, blah, blah. There's so much shit oh, boy. out there. But, um, but, yeah, like, I hope that I – like, for me – the aging that I hope to exemplify for my daughter is an aging that is joyful and confident in myself mm. in a way that celebrates beauty without putting it at the forefront of everything and who I am, mm. you know? Like, um, I think one of the things that aging has enabled me to do is to celebrate myself as a beautiful person mm. um, and, like, not just expect that – it either magically happens or it doesn't for mm. someone, you know? Mm. Um, so, like, being able to put the investment into myself and see it come out continually throughout the rest of my life. Postpartum is going to be interesting. There's going to be a whole healing process. Mm -hmm. I'm sure anyone who's gone through any major surgery or health experience has similar feelings about it. Like, your body just changes and you have to learn. But I hope that I see myself with more, continue to see myself with more value as I grow. And continue to embrace the the once was mm. <laughs> Kelly as well. And inspirations. Actually, like for me, like fitness, not in the sense of like clean health vibes, but more in the sense of like feeling powerful in myself is really inspiring to me. So there's a an Instagram influencer that I love. Her name's Train with Joan. And she at 77 mm -hmm. decided to like totally changed her lifestyle and like started weightlifting and completely like changed her life. Mm. And I think that remembering that when you're 55, your life is not over when yeah. you're 77, your life is not over. Yeah. And so like continuing to 
live as if that's the case, I think is really important. I think through this pregnancy, there's like like a microcosm of that is like, hey, just because I feel tired today does not mean I'm done. (laughs) Like I can still move. Mm -hmm. Um, I can still make that walk. I can still do that thing. Mm -hmm. Um, And so like holding confidence in myself and my body and what it can do Mm -hmm. is one thing that I want to maintain with me. And my grandmother, too, she's 90 years old. She's been, thanks to my aunt, seeing a trainer for the last five, 10 years, which has been like radical for her quality of life into her 90s. And so I I just want to like maintain a quality of life. Mm -hmm. That's really, to me, very important. So, yeah, I don't know. That's my rambling. I love it. I think you made me think of something. One of my favorite business influencers, Gary V. He has this whole phrase that he talks about. And it's like, in your 20s, you have literally your entire life. In your 30s, you have so, so much time. In your 40s, you've barely arrived to the party. At 50 is when shit starts getting like you are getting to run the show. Right. And like, it just paints this idea of like, he's like, in your 60s, you still have time. Like, and I think this idea of like, we're giving up certain things at certain points because we've reached some arbitrary number Mm -hmm. is so silly. Mm -hmm. For me, what I hope my aging process looks like is that continue muscle building of wholeness of like coming back to myself. I think it's very easy in life, in our society to be distracted or I don't know even how to describe it, like maybe set your wholeness to the side. And for me, that practice of coming back home and recentering within myself has been the most maturing process um, so far. I think I hope that I continue to look back on what I have done and feel proud of myself Mm -hmm. and smile. I think that is something that maturity and aging has given me the ability to look at myself with soft eyes. And that's really beautiful. Um, a couple people I look up to, I don't even know how to say her last name, to be honest, but Iris, the like 102 or 103 year old fashion designer. Um, she's like an icon and she's 102. And I'm like, The idea that you ever have to set fun to the side is, like, bullshit. And I really admire her and look up to her. And then another gal who's on Instagram, her name's Shelly Rogers Johnson. Her Instagram account is The Good Witch Official. And she is, I think she's, like, 60 or 70. And she's just fully wrinkles, loud and proud, wears her witch hat, and smokes weed. (laughs) And I'm just, like... To me, like, she embodies the I don't give a fuck energy and I'm going to do me Mm -hmm. and you're allowed to be here if you want to be. But she's not hiding. And I feel like that's something that can happen to women. They decide to start to, like, pull back and, like, "Mm -mm, I don't want to do that. I want to continue to show up and be loud and proud. With that, I've really enjoyed our conversation today, guys. I think aging is so nuanced and complex, and especially coming at it from a feminist lens. There's a lot of people out there, clearly, with a lot of opinions. Yeah. But, like, I think at the end of the day, it's just kind of like, fuck them. What do you say about yourself? Yeah. You know? So with that, woman beings, we hope you enjoyed the conversation and had a good time with us. It was very heartfelt while also getting fiery. So it was a little bit of a roller coaster, but I think it was a fun one. We would love for you to reach out and tell us what your thoughts are on aging as yeah. women, at aging as feminists. Mm-hmm. Um, or actually even we have some fathers that are fathering daughters on here that follow us. So tell us, like, how are you talking to your girls about aging? Mm. That could be a really good conversation. Yeah. Um, so how are you talking to your boys about aging? How are you talking to your boys about aging? Mm-hmm. For sure. Um, so within that, like, make sure you're following us on Instagram. And I was going to say Snapchat. We do not Whoa. have Snapchat. <laughs> <laughs> and TikTok. There you go. We're also on YouTube. We're everywhere, guys. Please like, follow, subscribe. Give us a review. It really helps us out. And I guess with that, we'll just catch you next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>